everybody welcome to the juicy channel um you are here with me of course the juicy one of this channel that is so juicy um today's controversial topic type of thursday and i'm definitely not by myself we have our favorite guest today on the channel yet again my mama Okay guys, so today we are going to be talking about tithes and fast fruits. Very brief on tithes and then straight on to fast fruits. Um, this channel, this channel is solely based on us working out our own salvation. So that's what we are going to be doing so that you can also do it, so that you can also make decisions for yourself. We're just here dishing out some advice and some scripture, and that's about it. And if you have not subscribed to this wonderful channel, please hit that subscription button and be part of this juicy family and always be here to receive some juice, okay? Mm -hmm. So our first scripture for the day is from Malachi 3, verse 10. It's specifically on tithes where the Bible says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And then it goes on to say, test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. It, um, see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you my blessing. Amen. I mean, so um, the only reason we came back to tithe is because there are people who have been asking questions about tithes and we just want to clarify on that. Okay, do you want to elaborate on the scripture first? Of bringing all the tithes in the storehouse of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That one, exactly that one. <laughs> okay, uh, it has become a very common verse. That wherever you go, it will be the basic scripture. Within six months, you are in that church. There's no way that they cannot touch on Malachi. There's only one thing I like in Malachi. It says, test me on this one. Yes. So for me, that's what stands out. Mm -hmm. Because when you test somebody, you're saying, just, just test and see and check if I will not do what I said I will do. Okay. Basically, the purpose of today was on the first fruits. Mm, yes. And then we're touching on tithes. on tithes. Let me start by saying tithes have got a percentage. 10%. Ten percent. Mm -hmm. First fruit do not have a percentage. It's first. Anything first. That's the one. They are two separate offerings. The amount of the first fruit is determined by the individual, him or herself. Depending on how much you have earned, on what you have blood, blood you shall reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. So you have sown, now you have to reap how much mm -hmm. in terms of value. So you will de determine that first fruits as to how much you will give. The first fruits offering limited to just fruits and livestock, no ways. When they say first fruits, it was like when you have got a garden or a vegetable where you can say whatever you reap first. Mm -hmm. That's where you will determine that if I go and reap there in my garden, the very first one. Okay. Yes. I remember the swanas, they used to do that and bring it to my house in a fat. I was not yet even a pastor at that time, but they have this revelation about me. So I was eating their first fruits. So if you are working, for instance, the salary, your first salary, you can sacrifice it as the first fruit. Mm. How you, you do that, as you, we will read as we continue in terms of scriptures, it's one, one, one thing that you bring to the priest. All the rest, the tithes, you bring them in the storehouse of the Lord. They know that there's a priest there, but it's not the only beneficiary of the tithe. But when it comes into first fruits, it specifically said bring it to the priest. 
can i just say if you haven't watched my video on tithes from last year please check it out that's where i specifically go in depth about tithes and who's supposed to benefit from tithes and all of that i'm just pointing that out since you yeah mm. so but basically today one thing we must understand about giving is that you give to the best of your ability as the holy spirit edges mm -hmm. so that's very important no one can say you've given a little no one can say you've given more it is about how the holy spirit urges you to give so we have indicated i would just like pulling to read from the book of ezekiel what does this first fruit entail okay it reads as follows the first of all the fruits of every kind underline the first of all some people would say if you are working you're earning a salary then if you get there and then you actually assume that when i go i will pay the first fruit once every time when you get an increase if you were earning three thousand rand for instance and then you get an increase of 10 percent the following year the of 10 percent then it means the extra year 300 300 rand so you take that 300 rand for that first month you receive it and pay it as the first fruit every time that difference that is the first increase you will always pay it that's how i understand it yes because it, it at the end what i like the most about the first part is the fact that it says every kind every that, kind yeah that's what mom is trying to explain that um every time you get a fest of anything mm. a fest of your first job a fest of your second job a fest of your promotion a fest of every kind that you bring unto the storehouse you bring to the house of the lord for the priest to be specific mm. Okay, and I'm not just saying this, guys, because my mom is a pastor as well. I'm not attesting to this because my mom is a pastor. I'm just saying. Um, I, I also have other pastors that I've come across um, in my life besides my mom. Mm -hmm. And yeah, okay, before we get into whatever I wanted to say, let's continue. It says, from all your contributions shall be for the priest." Yeah, that is everything you contribute shall specifically be for the priest. And then it says, you shall also give to the priest the first of your dough to cause a blessing to the rest of your house. Amen. Amen. That is, if you are baking the first of your dough, you will give to the priest. So that's why it's called first fruit. It's another kind of offering. So it's another kind of giving. Mm. For instance, I've indicated somewhere where I've listed, if pulling you can remember, 12 reasons as to why we should give. Why are you giving? People give for different reasons, but then these are the basic ones to help the poor, to serve the Lord, to do that and do that. But there's just one or two that I would like to mention, which says give beyond your ability. That is generally you have to give beyond your ability if you can and that will help you beyond your ability is when you are able to sacrifice on your giving first fruit is one of those things where you give beyond your ability because it's a lot it's a lot it's a you lot. sacrifice you have to calculate that i won't have this and this and this and the sooner you do that from the time you are not used to money the best yeah then the rest of your life you know now it's just those portions where you get a promotion where you get an increase and so on and so on mm. Mm. um also to add on what mom is saying ne? we read um at the end of the scripture where it says the first of your dough to cause a blessing to the rest of your house ne? which goes back to that thing you wanna what in with with this scripture name for me it says that you are giving for yourself mm. you are bringing the first of your dough so that you may cause a blessing on the rest of your house that means that if you bring your first income unto the house of the lord as your first dough then you are causing a blessing 
so that God can bless you more so you may flourish in your job, so you may flourish in other jobs, maybe for God to make provision of more because mm. the moment you bless somebody else, God blesses you. Amen. Amen. Mm. And um, you remember I told you guys that uh, the foundation of this um, channel, it is for us to work out our own salvation. Yeah? I'm going to make you an example about myself. The Bible says, no, but now let's bring it to the priest. Yeah? But it did not say to which priest. Mm. It did not say why that priest. That means it's something you have to decide in your heart. Uguti. As the Holy Spirit edges. Exactly. As the Holy Spirit edges. As the Holy Spirit leads. As the Holy Spirit leads. Yes. yes. So in my case, guys, I'm going to make you a good example. In my case, when I got a job, I got an internship. So the first of my tithe went to one pastor, right? And then the second time I got another job. Mama, are you looking at me like that? Are you looking at me like that? <laughs> so the second time I got another job, what I did was to say, minus from the second job, ne? minus what I got from the first, first initial job, ne? Mm -hmm. minus that man. And then on the remainder, Ne? Ngati, okay, you know what? I have been blessed with three pastors in my life. One that was with me from when I was at home in the Eastern Cape that was just there with me. One pastor of mine from KZN and then the pastor that I have today um, in Pretoria. You understand? So what I did was say divide all of that money for the three of them just to say thank you because you guys have been there and you've contributed to the lady that I am today. She has done. Okay. That just goes to prove, Uguti, it's up to you how you want to go about it. What is important is for you to do the word of God. But you must do as the spirit edges. Yes, yeah. as the spirit edges. And another reason why we give is we, we give so that you, when you want to grow spiritually, you are working out your own salvation. So you want to grow spiritually. So you take this first fruit as the seed. That mm. Lord, there is somewhere where I, wanna go. I, I want to go. I want guys. Exactly. I, I, I don't want to lose anything on the way. And you promised that if I'm faithful in this, you will do A, B, C, D. Yeah. So when things are rough, you can go there and say, Lord, but you have said and I obeyed. Yeah, I like that. You see? I don't know if you can remember, you, you, you may not remember when I left my everything to go to a ministry. And now an incident happened where my daughter was hit by a taxi in my presence. I had to remind God in the scene when I can feel that the soul is out of the body. I said, Lord, I left them for you to take care of them. Not in my presence. When I've done everything, like you going back to the Lord and say, no, my daughter will not die because I've done it. I reminded God in that scene and my daughter sneezed. Um, you know what she's saying, right? If you look at that Malachi where God says, test me in this. Mm. That's one thing I like about giving in the house of the Lord, especially about tithes, guys. It's because Uchi literally says, test me in this that means that it's literally first of all it's literally the only scripture where god says test me do mm. this and test me and then he says that by doing this test him and see if he will not open the windows of heavens for you ne? but then it goes back to to something that says that is god you you remind him of his word when you are in need Mm. Like you can always when you say, are desperate. Yes. You remind God when you are desperate. desperate. Another scripture says, Uzo kalime lingumbe zayo. Ne? That means every time you are in need, maybe you don't know what's going on with your finances, hey? Maybe you are you 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 receive money but you don't know how to handle it well. Maybe imali akuya ipelela, your money just somehow but before spends we close itself. people who do not have income, but they do have time. So that's why I always say if you don't have an income, you don't have a garden where you plant some vegetable or you don't have an orchard where you have got fruit, you can always give 10% by spending your time. 10% of your 10 time. 10% of your time. You can spend that time 
by assisting somebody or by serving God, you make sure that two hours, 40 minutes, it's my tithe that I have to pay to the Lord every day. It's God's time. Out of 24 Out hours. Of the, some, they even go to work in a, a, a child and youth care center to help in an old age home, to help a, an old woman who's staying alone at home who doesn't have something. You do the washing, you help clean the house. That's how you, you spend your 10% because it's 10% of the time that the Lord has allocated to you. For me, that is a very precious time. So you basically give what you have, what you can give. Mm. Do you understand? Also, before we close this channel, um, there are people who like saying that um, why should they give their tithes into the house of the Lord? Because pastors are eating their money. Eh? So, But what I normally say to people, ne, guys, is that God says in his Bible, bring unto the storehouse. Right? It doesn't matter what the pastor does. It doesn't matter what whoever does. What's important is the word of God that says bring unto the storehouse. So I always say in Zulu Wutwa Ususita Langawe. Do your part. When you stand before God and you have to answer before God, Utiko will be fully aware that you did your part. If the pastor or whoever decides to eat your money, they will answer before God. For their actions we all are going to answer before god um for our actions so i'd rather you just stick to serving god and doing the word of god as the lord pleases also there's no age group for paying your tithes there's no age group for paying your first fruits and there's no time frame guys if you didn't pay your tithes before you can always begin god knows your heart if you didn't pay your first fruits before you can always begin and make a change and improve your life we all striving to be better you know we are working out our own salvations on a daily i think you've said a mouthful basically everybody can give something unto the lord yeah amen there's none who would say, I, I have nothing. You give what you have. You've got time. You, as long as you live, you can give that. And as we close, I would like to say, may the good Lord bless you guys. It's not an easy thing. It doesn't matter what happens. The word of the, God, of the Lord says, uh, you have to do this. Try your best to do it. Yeah. Not every pastor that you know that eats money. There are those who are like Paul who say, I work because I don't want to be the burden to the church. So yes. we are not there today, but not every pastor. And I've also seen some of the brethren that are looking at the tithes that have been eaten. Exactly. They are the ones who are not paying the tithe. The tithers are quiet. The tithers will be faithful. But those who do not tithe, they want to know whose tithe was in. What was it used for? Watch. The tithe that you are asking, is it yours? So basically what mom is saying, if you shut up, do your part in the Lord. Let us all um, look forward to doing what is right before God. And just walk your walk and that's it. So you guys, we are closing off this video right now. Thank you for tuning in. Please give this video a thumbs up not a thumbs down a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe to the juicy naile channel um this is the place where we all work out our own salvations we love you and thank you for tuning in darlings bye, -bye. bye, -bye.